Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. I apologise in advance, my voice is a little hoarse. If you don't want to hear it, feel free to turn down the sound and play your own song over the top. I've been a little bit sick, as you all noticed last week, um, but I'm still going to make videos because if I don't, YouTube punishes me. Today we are entering the River Neen. Getting onto the River Neen, uh, we stopped in a marina because we had to go buy a licence and I think that was about 50 pounds. And then, so I turn around the boat, which you'll all enjoy seeing, I'm sure. And then just our first trip through uh, the River Neen, it was so beautiful. You'll see lots of reeds and not very many mooring spaces. Um, we also have an exciting encounter with some horses um, that were hanging out by one of the locks. And, oh, we moored up in the middle of a holiday park of some kind. I think it was Billingham? Billing. We moored up in Billing, tied to a couple of trees in the middle of a beautiful meadow. It was a really janky old mooring and I loved it there. Um, so that's where the video ends. So here it is. And here we are in uh, Nottingham. So you can tell that the... Uh, the towpath is a little more organised. We're going through a park, which is very nice. And uh, yeah, we're definitely not in the countryside as much anymore. It's starting to look a bit more like people are worried about people falling in and things like that, which I think is a bit less of a concern for people in the countryside. Um, lots of swans getting in the way. They don't seem to be quite as used to the canal boats as the ones that I'm used to. Um, so we've got to go through a few couple, couple of locks before we get right up to the uh, the point where you join the uh, River Neen or the River Nene or the River Nen. I am from the area of the country where they refer to it as the River Neen. And my apologies to anyone else who doesn't agree with me, but I'm going to call it what I know it, and that is the Neen. Um, so yeah, this was like one of the only boats we saw coming the opposite direction. Um, so it's quite nice, really, to be joined by somebody. I think that was one of the higher boats from the uh, higher company we saw a few days back. Here we go, one of our last single locks on the way there anyway. I do like a good single lock, it makes things much easier. You can walk over the top of the boat uh, to get to the other side rather than having to walk over the top of the lock every 10 seconds. And as you can tell, they empty very quickly. And for closing the lock it's also very useful because you can hover the boat just outside the lock and you can walk over the top of your boat to get to the other side of the gate to shut the other gate. Um, so yeah, as you can see, really the only places that you could possibly moor are the lock landings and of course you're not supposed to moor there overnight so that did prove a little bit problematic. As far as finding overnight moorings that is in this stretch. Very beautiful though. Now some of you don't like the fact that I speed up the video so I just want to point out that if you go down into the corner of the options you can actually click and slow down the video so if you want to watch those parts at uh, slower speeds you can. So it's quite industrial as you come up this way into the portion where which joins the Neen. So you'll see lots of industrial type buildings.
like this beautiful carling factory, just right at the mouth of the River Neen. Um, and of course, this lovely low bridge is one of the main reasons you must keep an eye on the tide and uh, the warnings before you go onto the River Neen, because had the water been much higher, we might have been uh, trapped on the one of the sides of this particular bridge. And uh, just up there you can see a, a sort of bridge going over the top and just past there is the first lock is on the left and on the right there is uh, a little um, a weir and uh, it leads onto the marina that we got to to get our license and this is me turning the boat around by hand so I thought this might be an interesting thing for you to see so as you can see I pushed the boat off from the back and then I pull the front around. Um, I know a lot of people would probably use their engines and stuff like that, but to be honest, you don't get a huge amount of um, control over your direction when you are reversing. So when you are two-handing, or when we are two-handing, this is the, the method that we tend to employ. And just if any of you are wondering, I am wearing shorts and that's why tassels are coming out from under my dress. Oh, and don't forget your cup of tea, because you will have to jump on right at the last minute. Although I think in this instance I may actually have missed jumping on, but that's okay, you won't see that. Oh, yes, I got left behind. Not to worry. <laughs> it's all fine. You can always be picked up later on. So, of course, now my partner has uh, started using the engine at this point, and I've decided to do a little dance to entertain you. And we're off! One of the things we did find a little bit difficult about the Neen is that there's quite often um, two directions you could go and it's often just a little way in the one direction there'll be a bunch of uh, floating bollard things and uh, you won't be able to see them until it's too late basically. <laughs> um, so do keep an eye on the map. Here we are passing under the University Bridge just when we've gone through the first lock and then we're out on the open water. Yeah, the signage isn't ideal either. You can see that tiny red sign there saying, don't go this way. Um, quite easy to miss. Really big, nice boat there. I assume that's some sort of restaurant. And as I mentioned before, it was the deep country. Oh. And then we came across a massive bunch of school children in kayaks and it, this was a bit frightening uh, because we didn't want to hit them but their adults were very good about getting them all to go to one side. And again another lovely bridge. So as you can see on the uh, right hand side here, there was a couple of moorings. Um, when we bought our license, the woman told us we needed to take off our canal goggles and if we liked the look of the spot, just moor there. Um, and this tr proved to be truer than we had imagined, um, as you'll see at the end of the video. more reeds as you can see. Um, we saw people sort of <laughs> stuck in the reeds just having their lunch next to a sheep field. Uh, there definitely wasn't a huge amount of road access and there were a lot of really interesting locks as well. So they started off fairly normal like this one and then later on we saw guillotine locks which I'd never come across before and frankly hope I never come across again. They were incredibly slow and uh, 
the nice thing obviously about being on the river is that one end is left open generally so if it's set your way you manage to go a bit further that day yeah the bend in the lock that was a bit of a strange thing for me but it's actually quite nice because then you can uh, immediately start legging it rather than having to pull it back with your arms first The locks all did generally have a bridge rather than having um, uh, handlebars on the actual lock itself, which I think is quite nice for people who are maybe a little older who are cruising here. These were very heavy locks and very slow, hence we'll be going into hyper mode very soon. And of course the obligatory uh, watch for life from some uh, wanderers, ramblers, walkers. It does help to pass the time on the very slow lock so I'm always up for a chat unless I'm messing something up and then I'm not up for a chat at all. <laughs> There's always time to check on my garden. So here I'm just, because the actual gates were made of metal, I was just making sure we didn't hit it. And again, we're out on the open waters. It's really nice when it gets this, this wide. You really know you're on a river when you're on something like this. <laughs> As you can see it looks like there is locks on both the left and right I think they're floodgates but then on only one side you've got those sort of floating bollards that we've really got to keep an eye out for <laughs>
The horses, which was for me the highlight of the day. So on the left you see the guillotine lock and then at the edge of the uh, right lock gate you can see three horses are rubbing themselves on the lock which is fun for them because they have something to scratch their scritches and uh, fun for us because we get to stroke them when we do the lock. Um, I should say we weren't being naughty, there's actually a public footpath that goes through their field, so they're obviously just friendly horses. Now something I didn't film that uh, we did have happen when we were here is right at the end I had a few apples left which I had picked for making an apple pie that I cut up and gave to the horses and that made them very frisky and excited. Um, I wish I had filmed it, but to be honest, I'm glad that I didn't because they got so frisky that I had to run away. Oh, and look, here's first contact when we got to have a, a pat on the nose with the horses. <coughs> and of course, as I know, you must not walk directly behind a horse, otherwise they might kick you. So that's why I take a very wide loop around the horses. And you'll have to trust me that um, I left them plenty of room. Just so you know, I'm a safe horse person. <laughs> Oh, and the, I've, I've sped this bit up. The horse is not a maniac. <laughs> He's just scratching his neck. And as you can see in the background, I'm working the uh, guillotine lock. And here they are being all frisky after they've had some apples. So we just stuck to the opposite side of the lock when that happened. And then we're opening the guillotine lock once we've uh, emptied it out. Ready to get going on our way. And I think we're pretty close to billing at this point. Uh, yeah, so there's lots of uh, boats and they all have a little shed. And uh, if any of you out there are people who have one of these little sheds, uh, to go with your boat. Please tell me what you keep in your shed, what you do in your shred. If I had a shed, I'd have a freezer in it with ice cream and frozen things and maybe a bath. And then we start getting into these little um, sort of temporary holiday homes uh, in Billing, as I believe it's a holiday park. It looks very nice. We saw lots of people fishing and a couple of people uh, paddling in a weir, a very, very empty weir. It looked fairly safe. Um, they also had a fun fair, and I also went to um, a little shop, um, a little place they had that was just lots of shops in sheds, which was really pleasant also. I actually think that I would be quite happy on a holiday in Billing. So let me know in the comments if you've been holidaying there. 
ever before. How did you find it? Did you eat waffles? Um, yeah, so it was really such a lovely day. And uh, this is why we enjoyed our holiday so much, that we just saw such lovely countryside scenes and we met a lot of very lovely people. So now we are on the search for a mooring. We're just coming out the other side of Billing. And to be honest, we really struggled with the mooring we found because it started to get a bit blowy and kept blowing us to the wrong side. But very eventually, we did make it to the mooring that we were aiming for, which was uh, on a couple of trees, which we'll see in just a moment, in a meadow. And it was a really lovely place to moor. I must admit, it was a little bit... Um, a little bit wild. Um, I did hurt my knee quite badly uh, when we had a friend come to stay. I jumped onto the boat really confidently to show him how safe it was and uh, my foot missed the gunwale and my arms did make it to the boat so I didn't fall completely in, just my shoe. Um, but I did give my knee a good old whack on the side of the gunwales and I've had a bruise for weeks. So here's where we moored up. You'll see in a second the ropes. Uh, so that's the front line tied onto the tree. That's the back line tied onto the tree. Please rest assured that we were in the whole time. So um, if the water line had changed, we would have been able to go out and um, and uh, loosen the ropes, which we did actually because we had a big storm, I think, the first night we were there. And that's the lovely field we were moored in. It felt like really secret because from far away you couldn't even see the boat. It was great. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure, you can click subscribe. If you would like to, you can go over to Facebook and search this narrowboat adventure where you'll find my Facebook page where I post new videos. You can jump on over to Patreon. Uh, there'll be links for all this in the description. Uh, I have to say a massive thank you to my new patron, Roy Johnson. Um, I will get yours and I've got a couple of other key rings still to do. I'm just waiting for a little bit of good fire weather so I can get the brand heated up and burn those uh, key rings and then get them all sanded up and ready for you. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you can't get enough of narrowboating, you can click down below. There'll be links to a playlist with all of my videos and there'll also be a link to my new podcast with my friend Marlies, which of course we've taken a couple of weeks off because of my sickness. Now, you can be thankful that you're not going to catch it because you're the other side of a video. Whereas in my real life, I've made everybody else sick. Thanks so much for watching. Bye! <laughs>